Hello and welcome to video 221. Now, for this video, Aspen Lake. This wasn't meant to be the destination for this video. I've actually been to Farlow's this morning. Yeah. Drove all the way to Farlow's from work. Done two laps of the place. Had a good look around. And the place was absolutely ramo. There were a few empty swims, so... But yeah, there was a couple of empty swims in the pads and a couple of empty swims at the very top end of the M25 bank. Areas which I didn't think would old fish in these conditions. And yeah, it's, I, I didn't want to make do with being in a swim just for the sake of I'd driven there and I'd got there and I wasn't going to just rock up while I'm go. I'm here now, so let's make the best of it. So, the two laps, chatting to everyone, no one was going. I turned around, come back home, and ended back here, Aspen Lake. I'm in a swim called the Little Beach, or the Point as it's sometimes called, which is just one swim down to the right from where I fished in the last video. So, uh, yeah, not fishing yet. I've still all my kits on the ground. I'm not organised at all yet. Not fishing. But anyway, guys, I need to crack on because after a three hour round trip, hour and a half of walking around Fahalos, just to be back here again, <laughs> what a nightmare. Right, anyway, I'm going to crack on. I'll see you guys later on. Right guys, so I'm nearly organised, all the kit is more or less organised behind the camera, rods are kind of ready to go, uh, bait wise, I'm going to use what I've got left of the seafood for the first two uh, outings with the boat. I've probably got about half a kilo of seafood pellets left and maybe a quarter of a kilo, if that, of boilies left and then that's the last of the seafood that I've got when I went into Indus in the week to pick up some uh, more bait they, they uh, didn't have any more seafood so I picked up some beet anana so um, so like I said, enough to do the first two rods, then we'll have to switch to the beat and honor afterwards. Hook baits wise low. I thought I had some beat and honor hook baits with me, but I've, I haven't picked up the bucket that I've got the beat and honor hook baits in. I have got the seafood hook baits with me, but because I plan on using the beat and honor, that's what I'm going to, well, I ain't got a beaten on hook baits with me, so I am going to use the Exo Carp hook baits. Not used these in a while, so just thought I'll go with them. A bit more buoyant than all of Hinder's other pop ups, these ones. So I've had to modify the rig a little bit, what we'll have a look later in the blog to keep them pinned down. Right, anyway. Let's get the rods out and uh, let's get them fishing. Otherwise, it's going to be getting too dark, as you can probably tell. I'm in the shadows already. Might look like behind me because the sun's obviously a bit higher than I am, but, <laughs> but actually, we're in the swim, it's already a bit, a bit shady. The swim is, not me. I'm not shady. Right then guys, gonna knock up sort of 
Well, yeah, well I say kind of mix. So when I went in Indus the other day to pick up me bait, so, so there's all me beating on the boy leaves. I've got some 12 mil and 15 mil. I wanted some of the beaten on the pellets as well, but um, they'd sold out of the pellets. So I've got some of the regular, just cut pellets like the non oily type. So I've got some in 8.5 mil, 4.5 mil, and a 6 mil. So basically, what I kind of asked for. But just in kind of, you know, the unflavoured, non oily type pellet. So I'm going to stick all them in my bucket. Just to have a nice mix of sizes. But then to make them sort of beet anana-y, I've got some of the beet anana food glug. So what I'm going to do is just put all that in one of the pellets. And then that, they soak up all them juice, all that juice. And there we go. I now have beaten on the pellets. So you can smell this guys. It's beaten on it. Smells absolutely lush. Right, so that's me pellet mix done. And then what I'll do when I load up the boat, I'll just put a bit of a mix of the 12 mil and the 15 mil in as well. Right. Don't know if you can see behind me. Two rods are out. Third rod is going to go down the left hand margin to the in, in front of the lilies. Oh god, this smells good enough to eat. And then uh, that's it. All three rods would be fishing for the night. About time too. It's getting on for like tea time now, so feed the fish and feed me. So that's it guys, we are now fishing. So we saw one of the rods go out into that kind of alcove I've got in front of me. Um, I don't know what the range is to be fair, but um, I don't know, it's probably got to be about 15 wraps out. Uh, there's a little V in the trees that marks where my right hand rod is going to. Then a kind of a little skinny W in the trees where my middle rod's going to. And then, um, as I've just seen, left hand rod line is doing practically a 90 degree turn off the rod tip down to the uh, lily pads down to my left. I mean, when I was here last week, I had a tench off the lily pads, so, uh, so yeah, it's always worth having a, a rod next to the lilies. And as I said last week, if the swims were on the island, you'd have a rod over there all day long, so... Right, got a little bit more organising than the swim behind me, but we are now fishing, so once I've sorted out that mess behind me, I can put some dinner on. Oh, good evening, guys. Oh, good night, should I say. What are you just coming up for, uh... I don't know, somewhere between 11 o'clock and midnight. 
all quiet so far, but I'm just getting myself ready to bed down for the night. Hopefully, something can wake me up in the night. Preferably a big carp. Uh -uh. But yeah, alright guys, tired sir. Hopefully, I'll see you in the night. <laughs> oh, good morning guys. And again, a quiet night. <coughs> the middle, Amright and Rod have been doing a few bleeps, but if I'm being honest to myself, I think that's more of the uh, the undertow of the water, just kind of tugging at the lines rather than fish activity in my fishing spots moving about. Yeah, nice warm day. The wind certainly isn't blowing as heavy and as cold as what it was yesterday, so it's a bit more comfortable on the bank today than what it was during setup yesterday. But yeah, I'm not going to touch the rods yet today, well, this morning, until I need to. The baits that I'm using are super, super buoyant, so. Um, I oh, know I've not got to worry about them dropping over or anything, so, uh, so again, as per normal, I won't touch the rods until the force of nature forces me to wind in when I'll have to go and use the facilities at some point, I should imagine, today. And then, as per usual, when that happens, the rods will get done at the same time. So, anyway... With this nice weather we got, these nice blue skies, as you can't see at the moment, but I'll show you later. It's a nice day, we got a few clouds in the sky, a bit of a gentle breeze blowing. Obviously now we're heading into autumn now, the temperatures are dropping a little bit, so it's getting a little bit nippier on the bank. It's always worth being on the bank any time of the year, in my opinion. Right. I'll catch you guys later on when there's something more to show you. Now, B B52 just taken off from Fairford, guys. Hello, I'm playing that. Air Force are busy today, guys. There goes another B-52. Hi, guys. So, I am just getting my rigs ready for kind of going into the final, I say night, it's still only mid-afternoon, but, um, you know, I've had the call of nature. I've had to wind me rods in, so... Uh, the rods are about to go back out of the seat. There we go, no rods out. So, rebaiting the rigs now. And as I said, I had to make a slight modification to my rigs when I was uh, talking about my rigs yesterday. So, uh, we'll have a look at that little modification. Now, it's not um, anything amazing or revolutionary. But uh, so I am using the Ronnie rig. Oh, let's get a little bit closer to the camera. But, um, 
yeah, I mean, most of us have all used Ronnie rigs now, guys. But the pop-ups that I'm using from Inders, the XO Cup, are mega buoyant. So they require an extra little bit of weight to help keep the uh, Ronnie pin down. Uh, most of my Ronnies up to now just have this tungsten sleeve on, if you can see that. There we go, see it a bit more on the back of my hand. So, most of my Ronnies with the 12mm pop ups that I use, just the weight of the swivel, the hook, and that tungsten sleeve is enough to sink most of the 12mm pop ups that I use. But with these hook baits being mega buoyant, they need a lot more uh, weight to sink them. Well, I say a lot more, a bit more weight to sink them. I'm not really a big fan of putty to be fair guys, I mean, when was the last time you ever saw me using putty in any of my blogs? But uh, ESP do a fairly new bit of tackle, I mean this packet's empty now because I've used them all but, can you see that, ESP balance beads, these are the small ones and they weigh 0.3 of a gram. But we've seen in a lot of my blogs that now I use these uh, Gemini tidy booms to make stuff, you know, like D-Rigs and Ronnie Rigs now. And if I show you at this end, guys, basically, you know, you can see just below the loop how the fluorocarbon is fused to make the loop, which obviously makes a slightly fatter bit of the stem which is the same at this end oh it just so happens that them these beads from ESP the balance beads happen to slip and fit on that the fused bit of the leader at that end of the rig absolutely just perfectly so there we go so the extra little bit bit of weight I require is from them beads it isn't going to affect this rig too much if you know if the bait takes on a bit of water because the weight is on the boom and not the hook it's not going to droop down or anything so yeah, it almost seems like them beads were made absolutely perfectly to fit on these Gemini booms. So, yeah, I mean, didn't want to waffle on too much, but that just seems a nice, neat way of adding a bit of extra weight to a, a Ronnie when you need it. And if you are using bigger pop-ups that need more buoyancy, there are a bigger, heavier version of them as well, guys. So, um, but I just thought I'd show you that. It's a nice little touch, and obviously, unlike putty, it can never come off. So, yeah, I just thought it's a nice little touch to a modified rig for when you need some extra weight. Right, anyway. All three are baited up and ready to go. Time to get them back out in this wet stuff. That's it then guys, all three rods are now out again, still fishing exactly the same spots, you know, like kind of the V in the trees, the skinny W that I was on about yesterday, and the left hand rod 
to the lilies to my left. That duck's enjoying me bait anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, like I say, it's still only mid-afternoon, late afternoon now, uh, ish kind of time. So um, yeah, rods are set nice and early now for going into the night. I mean, now at that time of year, it's dark by seven o'clock now in it so, so yeah it's getting to that time of year where you have to kind of start setting the rods a little bit earlier now for your for your night time kind of part of the campaign but as I said before them but them exo cart pop-ups are super buoyant they'll easily keep a Ronnie rig stood up for at least 48 hours so I've got no worries about you know, getting the rods set a bit earlier than normal. But, but yeah, we're fishing again. And then, uh, that's it. Just sit and wait now, guys. Just got to wait for the fish to do their bit. I've done all I can. You know, baiting up with pellet, 12 mil beaten anna, and corn. So, uh, yeah, can sit back, chill, and relax now for the rest of the afternoon, evening. Oh, good evening, guys. And it is really only evening, but it's that time of the year now where we are losing the light a lot earlier in the evenings now. Obviously no fish yet. But I'm going to make myself cosy in my bivvy in a moment and put some dinner on and, yeah, get comfortable for the night because also now it's that time of the year where it's starting to get a lot chillier in the evenings now. So, yeah, time to get cosy for the night and hopefully get woken up in the night with a fish. So, Hopefully see you when it's a little bit darker, a little bit colder, and hopefully a little bit wetter. Well, good morning guys, and another quiet night. For whatever reason it seems like the, uh, the lake just isn't fishing well at the moment for whatever reason. Uh, quite a few people have left this morning from the grass bank and Basically everyone that's left so far that I've spoken to have all uh, blanked, so uh, so the lake is definitely fishing off form at the moment. Yeah, you've seen enough of these diary uh, sessions now to know this ain't an easy lake anyway, but but there's been something like 12, 13 people on this weekend and um, the only fish I know to have come out is a uh, few swims to my right. Roy, he had a pike last night on lunch and meat. <laughs> but um, yeah, but carp wise, nothing doing. So um, so for whatever reason, yeah, the, the carp fishing side of it is just uh, not happening at the moment. And with as many anglers that's been on at the weekend, you'd, you'd normally expect at least one, two fish to come out. But uh, so yeah, so for whatever reason, the, the lake's just kind of switched off at the moment. Could be that with, you know, the colder temperatures are just starting to kick in a little bit. Could be that the water levels are down a couple of foot. Who knows? But anyway, I'm going to fish right through to late afternoon, early evening, so... There is still plenty of time for something to happen yet. Not going to touch the rods. Obviously, we're not even having a single bleep. It's probably safe to say most, if not all, of my bait is probably still going to be out there that went out with the boat. So, the hook baits, I've said before, are super buoyant. So, they're going to be fishing perfectly. No worries on that side of it. 
but yeah I'm just gonna let the rods carry on fishing and just hope uh, <laughs> a gullible fish hopefully comes and takes my up bait before it's time to pack up this afternoon <laughs> fingers crossed eh guys <laughs> Boy Wonder's done it again. Yeah. He's in the seafood. There we go, guys. Someone's caught a fish and it's just been released back into this side of the lake. That would be Mr. Mark Wells, who's fishing out on the Bailiff's Peg, out on the beach area. So, another fish out the beach area moved over into this main part of the lake. That by my count now guys is 53 fish that has been caught out in the beach area since the dam was put in and moved over. One more fish for us to have a go at. <laughs> well then guys, I'm Mark Wells fishing from the island into the beach area of the lake. He's had another fish. And here it is, just being released back into our part of the lake. An 18 pound common, guys. Mark just sent me the picture through on my phone. That is now a total of 54 fish that have been caught from that section of the lake since it was dammed off and moved over to here. There we go, 118 pound common, released. And that's a rare fish, Bob never stocked any commons into uh, into this venue guys. And I think there's only three or four known commons in this lake, so uh, very rare fish. That, a common, in here. My fishing on the other hand guys, has been practically a non-starter. Not a bleep, not a liner, not nothing. But it is always good fun being out on the bank regardless. Half past four now guys. Hour and a half before I wind in and call it a day. Alright then guys, I'm pretty much coming to the end of my session now. If I step to one side you can probably see... I'm down to two rods, that's because I've, uh, I've wound a rod in and then I've just been having a bit of a play with the old marker rod at where I was fishing, just to, uh, more for future reference really, for future sessions, just to have a bit more of an understanding for the depth of, I'm fishing in for when I come back. Out in the middle here, pretty uniform, four foot all the way out. There's a little bit of a gully, about a rod length off the island that drops to five foot. So, uh, just, you know, building up some information and knowledge for for future sessions. But anyway, these two rods are going to come in now. That's it. Game over. It's time to wind in, go home, have a decent meal and a shower. Try another time. Unfortunately, this time it's been a complete blank. Not even a tench to show for me efforts this time, guys. Uh, well done to Mark, who's fishing right at the back there in the in the beach area. He's caught two more fish this uh, well this today, not this weekend, just today, and they've been moved over into this main part of the lake. So uh, that gives us more fish to go at for next time. <laughs> but anyway, guys, unfortunately. Sorry it's been a complete blank, but the lake does seem to be a bit moody at the moment. Not sure where I'm going to be next, or even when. I've got a family commitment next weekend, so I won't be fishing next weekend. So, anyway, whenever I do see you again, guys, till then.
tight lines. <laughs>